Hi, today I would like to start a new series of the video which I will talk about the AI and Internet of Things which is called AIoT, sometimes called edge computing or tiny ML. We will start from the framework perspective, what kind of framework we can use and how we can compress a model and how we can uh, write a low level programming and how we can implement this model in a, a tiny microcontroller. First, I would like to start with why questions. What is AIoT and why do we need a device machine learning or tiny ML in our life? In this slide, I will explain seven reasons why we really need a uh, edge computing or uh, tiny ML in our life. So the first reason is a real-time decision making. The best uh, example for this uh, would be the self-driving cars. As you know, the self-driving car is rapidly growing uh, in the market and uh, the concept of uh, self-driving car is gonna be uh, using a sensor and camera and using machine learning to uh, let the car drive autonomously. So in this case, uh, we will gather some input from the environment like photo and um, as well as the distance information through the LiDAR and RIDAR sensor and we compute this information either in the cloud or onboard computer in the car. So the main uh, reason for our discussion here, uh, we don't like to send the information to the cloud because it might be uh, you know time consuming and sometimes because of the internet connection is not good we wanted to uh, control the car simultaneously that is the main reason uh, we need an onboard computer in the car which can receive the data and compute the data and control the car almost uh, real time the second reason would be privacy and security. The best example here would be a voice assistance like Alexa. How Alexa works, uh, we send the voice to the Alexa and Alexa will upload the data or voice to the cloud. And there is an AI model in the cloud which extracts the useful information from the voice and send back information or command to the Alexa and based on the configuration of the Alexa it can communicate with the lamp with the TV or other device which is connected to the Alexa this is how Alexa can control the uh, the devices in our house but uh, the concept of here when we are sending our voice uh, we are losing the privacy of our voice now if we have a device which can uh, we can send the voice to the device and without internet connectivity it can compute locally and control the devices that is the best uh, option would be edge computing or tiny ml application the third one is uh, offline uh, reason uh, because sometimes uh, if there is application or or any devices can only work uh, based on the cloud-based uh, architecture um, in some uh, circumstances uh, there is no internet connection so that is why that device wouldn't work the next reason would be low band uh, uh, limitation uh, as you know sometimes uh, internet package or any other so uh, you know services uh, there's a limit of the low bandwidth so in that cases uh, it's hard to send uh, you know the big uh, volume of the uh, data to the cloud for the computing the next reason would be energy efficiency 
when we are using uh, our phone any device with internet connectivity we are using Wi-Fi which we are enabling RF uh, circuitry in our uh, device or our cell phone which usually RF circuitry use most of the energy from the battery so when we are sending a high volume of the data like video and images even voice uh, we are using more energy from the battery which the battery wouldn't last for a long time when we are uh, using our application to compute uh, on photo video and so on so um, if we minimize the circuitry and we we wouldn't send any data to the cloud of course we are saving the energy as well the next reason would be better scalability if we have a uh, application like a self-driving car uh, we can scale up the a small tiny ml for each of the tasks in the car let's say for example uh, we use the uh, DCS architecture like distributed control system and imagine we have 10 uh, application in the car one application is gonna be extract the feature from the images which is captured by a camera the other application would be extract the image or a distance from the LiDAR, 3D LiDAR sensor. And the other application is going to be control and communicate with the CAN bus to maneuver the car. So in this kind of application, if we can break down each of the tasks and assign each of the tasks to a tiny uh, uh, ML or edge computing we are having a better scalability in our application that is the other reason uh, usually edge computer uh, can have a better scalability the last reason would be cost effective so when we don't use cloud-based architecture we are not paying for the cloud services when we are dealing with the high volume of the data like photo images like a HD or 4k of course we need more space in the cloud to store compute and extract the feature so that is why for a long term uh, it wouldn't be cost effective when we are dealing with the cloud services so if we can implement all these uh, functionality or even uh, implement the machine learning model in the CPU level we would save a lot of money in our project or in our company there are three main machine learning deployment paradigms the first one is a centralized server paradigm. It is a traditional approach where the machine learning models are deployed on the central service and client access to the model via an API. The centralized server paradigm is a good application that require a lot of computational power and have a stable network connection. The second one is a cloud computing paradigm. In this approach, the machine learning model are deployed on the cloud platform like AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. Client can access to the model via API or SDKs provided by the cloud platform. The cloud computing product is a good application that requires scalability and can benefit from the cloud service like storage, data processing, and analytics. The third paradigm is the edge computing paradigm, which is the main concept of our series of video. In this approach, the machine learning models are deployed 
and the edge devices like smartphones, IoT devices, or drone or sensors. The models are optimized for limited resource available on these devices and can run locally without required a network connection. The edge computing paradigm is a good for application that required real-time response, privacy and security and have limited resources or internet network connection. Generally speaking, the choice of paradigm depends on several factors, including the size and complexity of the ML model, the amount of the data to be processed, and the latency and bandwidth required of the applications. I would like to explain the roadmap of AIoT or edge computing from the start point to the end point. So the goal of this series of video uh, would be how we can train a model in the computer and how we can compress this model which can be implemented in the tiny microcontroller so meaning the goal would be uh, deploy the machine learning model into a microcontroller to reach to that goal uh, I would like to break down the step and I will walk you through each of the step in the coming video and we will implement train and test a model in the small tiny microcontroller so first we need to uh, train and test the model in our computer so we are using a tensorflow and we are using python language to uh, train test and evaluate the model once we reach to that accepted criteria in terms of the accuracy we convert this model to the tensorflow light model so uh with having a TensorFlow light model, uh, we are able to run this uh, inference of the model into a devices which has an operating system such as Raspberry Pi or even a smartphone. And uh, in this case, we would be able to use C++ API and we can include uh, the libraries such as OpenCV to capture the image, resize the image and send this image to the model and uh, extract the information. It can be classification, object tracking and so on. In this step, we, we are not able to uh, deploy this model into a microcontroller because of the size of the model still is big and uh, TensorFlow provide another tool which is called TensorFlow Light Macro which we can uh, still compress the model and uh, in such a way we can deploy this model into a microcontroller and uh, in this case uh, we still would be able to use the C++ API to, to run the inference and uh, capture the information from the, uh, the microcontroller GPIO and uh, send this information to the inference of the machine learning model and then uh, get the result. At the end of this uh, series of the video, I will show you how you can uh, create your own voice assistance with a small microcontroller which can uh, recognize the voice and take the action based on the command you're sending to the microcontroller. I would like to share two great uh, references that uh, can be uh, useful for people who like to uh, go to a uh, tiny ML domain and of course uh, in this series of video I will use uh, some uh, 
information from these two reference to implement uh, the model into a microcontroller but if you still like to buy these two books I highly recommend you to buy these two books and here I put some uh, information uh, about uh, the context of the books and each box uh, walk you through some detail of the tiny ml of course tiny ml is still is a quite new area and a lot of things has to be you know discovered by researcher even the expertise but a uh, tiny ml book in the left hand side book is uh, mostly is a hands-on book and it will walk you through for a practical project from the uh, build, train and deploy a model in the computer and uh, how uh, you can compress to the TensorFlow Lite as well as TensorFlow Lite macro and how we can use a microphone uh, on an evaluation board uh, and then how we can uh, uh, run an uh, inference and get the result. The AI at the end in the right hand side is mostly give you a very uh, general or big picture of the uh, real application or real uh, target of a tiny ML such as wildlife monitoring, food quality, customer product cases. Uh, in the next coming video I will uh, go through the detail of the roadmap and we will build a real application together from design, train, test and deploy in the microcontroller. See you in the next video.